Sara Benferrado, Le Carasso, Saloniki Jew in Auschwitz, Testimony 1989 in Thessaloniki, Greece. Mengele had a girlfriend, the big physician by name Emma. She was Jewish from Czechoslovakia. Certainly, take, take this picture. You go in, you, you lead them to the one barrack was the bathrooms, the bathrooms, the halls. And I was walking towards, this was after a while that we were there, walking ahead of them. They were lined up five in a row. You had to go strict German rules. Mrs. or Miss Hesse, a gorgeous German blonde woman who happened to be Mengele's girlfriend. How did you know that? Well, we were there already for a long time in the blockout test and we, we already knew where we are and who is who. We knew Mengele, he was selecting us every day and we had to stand naked with the arms up. I don't know what he looked in the armpits. And, and he decided who goes left and who goes right. Well, she accosted me and she gave me a beating that you won't believe what I say now because I verified it with my dentist. She knocked out a wisdom tooth. That's how she hit me. I asked the dentist, is that possible? She said, of course it's possible. And I defecated right then and there on the road. Uh, Do you remember what Mengele looked like? Oh yes, he was a, unfortunately a good-looking son of a bitch. He was the mean, I, 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 I don't know, it was just unbelievable. He was wearing a high boots and that uh, hat that the SS was wearing and, uh, and the high neck sh uh, jacket and that uh, smile, that you know, the smirk, the smile. I, 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 I never. I mean, there is, there is not the word hate because I, uh, I, if I could kill, I have a feeling I would kill or right there. But I don't know why I was still hoping that uh, it will come out safe. But and so both you and your sister did. Uh, we did survive, but nobody the whole time, nobody know that we are sisters. Did you ever hear any other stories while you're in Birkenau about Mengele or experiments he had done? Or the, he, matter of fact, one of uh, uh, two, two, two girls was uh, there because it wasn't in uh, uh, just the beginning, matter of fact. He took them away because he said they're good looking. And one of them was blonde, even didn't have hair because everybody was bald, but he, he was some reason or other, he liked blonde or, or I don't know why, all the way, matter of fact, in his office and whom he had a lot of affairs, I don't know why I say affairs, because it was an affair, it was a rape. I had a job, you know, in the, in the crematorium one, you know, they want to put it in a big door, see. Put in a big door, you know, because they had a single door like this in this room, you know, where the people take off the clothes, you know. And one little door, you know, didn't went fast enough, you know, to throw in the clothes, you know, getting out the clothes in this robbing room, you know, because there are other people who were staying outside and waiting to get in, see. So what I saw over there shook my foundation all the way up from the bottom to the top. I thought if I go to sleep, I never get up anymore. That's what I thought. All of a sudden, I see a blonde woman. She was around, I would say, 30, 32, 35, the most. Blonde hair, blue eyes, you know, naked. She was wearing red shoes. And she uh, comes comes up, you know, from, from number one crematorium. And in, in right behind her, I saw who I see, Mengele, with, uh, with this kill him all, see? Mole was his name, yeah. And he's hollering, you know, are you Jewish? 
Are you Jewish? And she said, yes, yes, I'm, 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 ich bin ein Judin. In the book, a little bit closer to us, we were working about a hundred feet away, you know, making mixed mortar, you know, and the door was there only to finish off a little bit, you know. And, and all of a sudden I see he's taking the cane, he had a cane in his hand, he's trying to wrap around her neck, see, and pulling it to, to, to him. And she let loose, she must have been left-handed. She threw to my left, right in the jaw, you know, and he started going backwards, you know. Another one assessment kicked her in the tights and she fell down on her back in the in the feet in, in her feet up. He grabbed it and later Mengele grabbed another feet in the cane what he had in his hand, he pushed in in Virginia. Then the whole thing went in, in, in her. I saw the blood coming out just like in the river. He let her laden like this for two hours, and she was bleeding to death. He, he came out and calls me. He says, he pulls out, he pulls out the cane, and puts him against the wall. And he tells me, take the wheelbarrow, you move it around over there to the ovens, see, to the crematorium, to burn it, see. When I got to her, I grabbed her by the hand. She had still a, a, a little bit of pulse. She had still. And I put her on the wheelbar. And I started saying, you know, the prayer for the dead, Yiskadavi, Yiskadash. And I rolled her around to the back of the wheelbar. And I knocked on the door. And one guy came to the door and I says, he told me to bring her over her, over here. He said, what happened to her? I says, I turned around, I walked away, I didn't want to tell him even. I was afraid to tell him. I didn't see nothing, I don't know nothing. He told me just to move around, is that all? And I went back to my work. We got home, we got back to the barracks, you know, later, you know. I told you some guys, and boy, they were shivering and I was shivering, let me tell you down the street. And what can I do? I couldn't help her. I couldn't do nothing. I was just like a, a, a newborn child comes out, comes out, you know, uh, in in the few minutes that's helpless. 